We'd like to start the regular press conference by Minister Hayashi. Minister, the floor is yours. There are no statements at the outset from myself. Now we'd like to open the floor for questions. Those of you who have a question, raise your hand and come to the nearest microphone and state your affiliation and your name, please. Yes, Abe-san from Yomiri Shimbun. Yes, this is Abe from Yomiri Shimbun newspaper. About the UN reform, I have a question. The other day at the NHK program on UN reform, that we are coming into the new phase was a statement made by yourself. And with the Ukraine uh, and the Russian aggression into Ukraine, uh, the government of Japan has made uh, efforts uh, to the reform of the United Nations, but uh, the situation has changed hugely. So how to proceed with the UN reform? I believe there are different arguments. Where would you focus going forward? Yes, uh, for the international communities of peace and security, uh, the United Nations Security Council, permanent members uh, do have such major responsibility in Russia uh, which is a permanent member, has made this outrageous act by incursion, making incursion into Ukraine, have uh, indicated the necessity for new framework of international order. Japan has been appealing for many years uh, the necessity for uh, Security Council reform because the Security Council needs to be made into a more well-suited organization, meeting the needs of the time. We have been actively pursuing this. When I visited Turkey and UAE, I have met with the foreign ministers there, and I have raised this question of the Security Council issue. But the reform of Security Council, where the interests are complicated and complex, it is not easy. So, under uh, the Prime Minister Kishida's administration uh, to cooperate with many countries, uh, we would like to make all our efforts to realize a reform, uh, including uh, Japan becoming a permanent member. Next question, please. Next question from Asahi Shimbun. Asahi Shimbun, please. Nobuya is my name. I would like to ask about the uh, receiving of the evacuees from the Ukraine. As far as uh, the status of the government response is concerned, and as I understand that you have set up a support team to support the ev evacuees from the Ukraine, I understand that you will be reinforcing the embassy in Poland as well as the liaison office in Jeshua. And I understand that uh, Minister Fudukova will be visiting Poland. So how do you intend to specifically receive the evacuees from the Ukraine going forward? As was announced by our Prime Minister on March 25th, Recently, we have decided to reinforce uh, the Japanese embassy in Poland as well as the liaison office in Jeshov. And we've also set up a new Ukraine evacuee support team. And we will be identifying the needs of the evacuees for their travel to Japan through these offices. We will be additionally sending employees and staff from MOFA as well as from the Minister of Justice who have the relevant expertise on these matters to the ground. We will continue to identify and grasp the requirements of the evacuees for their travel to Japan and, this, and what type of support they require. And also with regard to issuers on visas as well as concrete travel methodology, we intend to very carefully consult with the relevant parties going forward. And with regard to rendering support with regard to rendering necessary support to people who will be evacuated to Japan, we will continue to identify the requirements of the support, and, we, and the government as a whole will speedily try to consider what Japan can do to support them. And also, as far as uh, the Minister of Justice, Mr. Furukawa, is, is concerned, he will be visiting Poland as an envoy of the Prime Minister. He'll be visiting Poland, which shares borders with Ukraine. And this is a country that has received a very large number of uh, evacuees from the Ukraine. For that being the case, I understand that he intends to meet with the government officials of Poland. And also, he will be visiting the, the he'll be visiting sites to see how the evacuees are being received. And I understand that he will be identifying very accurately uh, the issues pertaining to the receiving of the evacuees. We'll be conducting detailed studies going forward. Next question, please. Next question, Tanaka-san from GG uh, News. Yes, this is Tanaka from GG uh, News. 
uh, about uh, the writing of the name of uh, uh, the cities in QF. Uh, in Ministry of uh, Defense, uh, in uh, their documents, uh, the Kiev uh, and Kiev, the both pronunciation of uh, the name uh, are to be written in. What, what about the Minister of Foreign Affairs on this question? As for uh, the, the government, uh, uh, on uh, the, uh, the case of the uh, city of Kiev, uh, the where, uh, as a practice, the name has been already been well uh, the black, uh, established uh, for the other uh, the uh, geographical names. Uh, we have been using katakana expression uh, based upon the Ukrainian uh, pronunciation. As for for foreign ministry, as to the writing uh, as well as the name of uh, the Kiev uh, at uh, the various occasions, so we would like uh, to incessantly consider uh, what name and the pronunciation would be appropriate. Please. I'm from Liu Kyushimpo. Yesterday, Ambassador Hashimoto, responsible for the Okinawa region, he made a comment which seems to condone training by the U.S. forces in Okinawa. It seems to indicate that he has changed the interpretation of the Southern Forces Agreement. What is your re response to the comments made by the ambassador and also with regard to the MOFA Okinawa office with the rape incident of young young women back in 1995 was accepted as new? But then, it seems th that the ambassador has made extensive interpretation of the Cecil Forces Agreement. We do question the position of the Japanese government. So what are your thoughts on these comments? With regard to the training that took place in Nagawan area on March 22nd, I understand that there was no prior notification made to the Japanese side for the purpose of achieving the objectives under the Japan Japanese Security Treaty. Various trainings are permitted outside U.S. facilities and areas as long as they do not accompany live drilling exercise. However, at the same time, though, U.S. forces in Japan, as they operate to the aircraft, naturally, they must pay appropriate consideration to the safety of the public. Now, with regard to the impl implementation of the training in the Nagawan Bay area, Minister of, just, just Minister of Defense to U.S. forces has put in a request so that the impact of the training be minimized to the local community. As for myself, at the Japan U.S. 2 plus 2 that took place in January this year, Together with Minister Kishi, Minister of Defense, Minister Kishi, we requested that U.S. forces pay the utmost consideration to the safe operations in terms of the burden and impact on the local community. Going forward, we'll continue to coordinate with the Minister of Justice. We will ask U.S. forces to pay the utmost consideration to the safety aspects and that they minimize any impact on the local community. We will respond appropriately. Thank you. Next question, please. From Chugoku Shimbun, Higuchi san. Yes, this is Higuchi from Chugoku Shimbun. On Saturday, Ambassador Emmanuel, uh, the US ambassador to Japan, uh, that had visited uh, together with Prime Minister Kishida uh, the park, uh, Memorial Park in Hiroshima. And the President Biden uh, coming uh, to Japan next time, uh, the May had. Uh, a state that he would like to visit either Hiroshima or Nagasaki, uh, the sites of uh, the atomic bombing. Uh, and I believe uh, the government of Japan uh, that has uh, the being uh, making uh, uh, statements that it is important to have uh, the VIPs visit. But what is the position of government of Japan on this possibility? For uh, Ambassador Emmanuel, uh, that has made a statement, and, and I am fully aware uh, of that, for the international community, uh, to have a precise understanding uh, of uh, the atomic bombing, and that will be uh, important as a starting point uh, for uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the nuclear disarmament. So the uh, peace visit uh, to uh, the atomic bombing site uh, is uh, the very important. As to President Biden's uh, the visit, uh, the concrete itinerary or where he may visit has not been decided at all. That is how I understand. Uh, Mik Sang from Nikkei Shinbun, please. Nikki from Nikkei Shinbun. Let's ask about the launch of missile by North Korea. 
with regard to the launch of the missile at the, at the NHK program, you mentioned that this is simply North Korea taking advantage of the, uh, the international community's uh, response to the Ukraine. The fact that the North Koreans launched their missiles, what do you see as their intent behind the launch of these missiles? Thank you. What is important is that any attempts to unilaterally change the status quo, as far as any attempt to unilaterally change the status quo through force, such as that took place in the aggression of Ukraine, should not be limited, should not be allowed in the Inter Pacific, in particular in East Asia. Now, of course, as far as Japan is concerned, we cannot definitively identify what the intention of North Koreans are. However, North Korea launched ballistic missiles, which seems to be a new type of ICBM, and they conducted this provocation following the recent ICBM class missile, and that they fell in Japan's EEZ. And this represents a very grave and imminent threat for Japan's security. And we believe that while the international community is responding to Russia's aggression into Ukraine, the North Koreans had taken advantage of the situation. And so therefore, this is a very clear and serious threat for the international community. And it is a reckless act that cannot be overlooked. We will coordinate closely between Japan and the United States, Japan, U.S., and South Korea, and cooperate with the international community and pursue complete implementation of relevant UN Security Council and aim to denuclearize North Korea. And that is what we will have to do going forward. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, the last, uh, lastly, uh, Azhar, Mr. Azhari. Azhari Khaldun, Pan Orient News, Arab News, Japan. What is Japan's position on Russia's membership in the G20 group? Mm. Uh, American President uh, Biden, according to the report, is asking for removing Russia from this group. So do you agree or disagree with that? Thank you. Hi. Uh, the Russia's aggression into Ukraine is an attempt to change uh, unilaterally the status quo by force. And this is an act uh, which shakes the very fabric of the international order. Uh, this is in clear breach of international law. Or in order uh, to protect the very foundation of the international order, uh, we would like to work uh, in solidarity with the international communi community uh, to make a resolute uh, uh, the actions. Uh, as for Russia's participation in the G20, uh, we need to discuss with the G20 members, including Indonesia, which is in the presidency of the G20. Uh, we would like uh, to consider uh, the developments going forward and to make appropriate decisions. Thank you. This is the time for us to end the conference. Thank you very much.